Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's been well over this last week. Sorry I've been gone for a while. But here we are, we're back. Let's hop right into it. As some of you may already know, the CIA has thousands of declassified documents that anybody can just get online and read. And these are not weak reports. These reports were so crazy to me that I had to stop and make sure I was actually on the CIA website and not looking up creepypastas. Now there are well-documented reports of UFO sightings, alien sightings, and even alien abduction. But their declassified reports on paranormal things and superhuman abilities are just as crazy, if not crazier. For example, in one of these unclassified documents, it talks about how they had to investigate a man who was able to heal people by just touching them. What was stranger than the claim of this man being able to do this was that they had a scientific explanation explaining how this man was able to do this. Basically saying that there's an electromagnetic field around each human being that's able to be controlled through emotion. If you guys want me to talk about more declassified documents, leave a like and let me know in the comments. That's some cool stuff right there. Imagine psychic powers and we all just have it and we just don't know how to tap into it or it's been suppressed on purpose. Why should we pay more attention to you than to the other 159,999 things I got stacked over here? And so what's the hook? Second language, life experience, success in, in whatever it is you're doing, foreign travel, living in a foreign country, mastering a foreign language, showing a comfort level, living in a foreign culture. All of those kinds of things kind of make you percolate to, to the top. We go to college fairs. Uh, we, we go to uh, Arab American Week up in Dearborn, Michigan, we have a big tent up there where we talk to Americans of Arab descent. We recruit just like any other enterprise. In addition, we've got a lot of people who self-identify, who, who say that they want to be part of the Central Intelligence Agency. My last full year as director, which would have been 2008, we had 160,000 Americans make genuine applications to CIA. And I'm not talking about clicking on the website. I mean going through all that very intrusive paperwork to make themselves eligible for employment with us. Yeah. That's pretty crazy to think about though. The fact that like that many people wanted to be in the CIA. Sorry, I had to get the light out get used to the idea of things being fake. That's why the idea of us being in a simulation is so popular. Like you ask a spiritual or a conspiracy theorist, what are we living in? They're gonna think simulation. No, what we are experiencing and what we are here for is real. Black people, Asian people, indigenous people are real. This earth, this ground, this air I'm breathing is real. There are just imitations. Just think of it like this. You know how whenever you go into a lot Yes, everything is real. Um, we are not in a simulation. I read about this thing DARPA was putting together, a robot called the Eater Robot. It's a robot that fuels itself on uh, biological matter. You can say, no, we don't mean biological material in that way. We need plant matter and, mm. you know, dead rodents and what have you. <laughs> but there's a real fucking robot that they designed that eats biological material I mean, as fuel. Yeah, it is pretty wild because that is a real project and it is a real series of robots that they've created. It's just in DNA that we can live like immortality, like immortal through clones and transfer our consciousness. I mean, living proof now. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually looking. Shout out. Clone it shout out. Clone yeah, could... What's that? Shout out. Clone aid. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you could actually, as soon as you die, they could actually freeze your body. Well, what, what happened with, with my first gen is they took the skull because um, he initially had written in a will uh, to the railing movement that if something were to happen to him, they can ship the skull over immediately to clonate so they can remove a fragment of bone that's located here. And in this fragment of bone, it stores all of your memories and consciousness. And with that, they can make a sufficient 
replica of yourself, a reproductive version of you, including your memories. And you can be selective as to which ones you keep or don't keep. And this process has been around for quite some time. Like Dolly the Sheep was cloned back in, I think, the late 70s. Hmm. This guy on one, he just walking around like, yeah, I'm Kid Boo, I'm, I'm a clone. Like, Kid Boo is a clone character in Dragon Ball Z, like, if you don't know anything about it. You're missing the point. From Dragon Ball Z, just go look it up. If you want to kill somebody, just get a clove of garlic. Push the point of your dart gun, your blowgun projectile, into that, and he will die very rapidly. The CIA is trained to use this, trained to use oleander leaves, which are an alkaloid. Six. Hmm. Ridiculous. We are all being played. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's ridiculous that's funny though because it is a bunch of people that look alike that's it is pretty funny the reason why spirituality is important is because it is reality and we are not human beings having a spiritual experience we are spiritual beings having a human experience who i am and what i am is not my body it's not even my personality you know it's not the trauma i suffered it's not what i've been through that there is a little spark of the divine inside of me there's hard data that shows around mental health and well-being that having serenity meaning purpose a losing of oneself to a transcendent self of the divine increases greatly the quality of our lives. We're a part of something much greater and much more beautiful than ourselves. And in living in that state can greatly enrich your life. Oh man, I totally agree with him. Like that was really nice to hear. And it was really interesting. So when you first walk up to somebody, you've got to keep in mind that nobody is what they appear to be. Nobody. Every human being has three lives. It's what we're taught. Ooh, three lives. There's a public life, a secret life, and a private life, right? So the order is public life, private life, secret life. The public life is what we're all presenting to each other. It's what we want to appear as in public right? You want to look cool and suave and handsome and you want to sound nice and you want to surround yourself with nice things because that's what you want the public to perceive about you. It may not be real, but it doesn't have to be real. If they perceive it to be true, then you have won because you have just perceived, you have just manipulated their perception. That's why broke ass high school and college kids will still wear nice name brand stuff. So they don't, they, they don't look like they're broke ass students, mm -hmm. right? Then you've got your private life. Now your private life is what your closest confidants know about you. So what your wife might know about you, what your close friends know about you, what your parents know about you. So publicly, nobody knows my feet smell bad. 
privately, my wife knows my feet smell bad, right? But I'm never going to make that part of my public persona because it goes against what I'm trying to display as an image. So here you've got these two lives. When you meet a stranger, they're presenting their public life, always. Most of your connections, most of your friends, unless they are in the private life, they are all in the public life. Your coworkers, your customers, these are all people who you are dealing with, you're interacting with on a public life to public life level. We haven't even talked about the secret life. Yeah, this guy, he, I mean, he says a whole lot of things, but most of what he says in pretty much all of his interviews is like common sense stuff. It's like stuff that like everybody should just assume already. Uh, I kind of think he's capping like all together. All right, so those were like 10 years ago, close to. Um, imagine where they are now, and they're still kind of derpy now, so. In this video, I'm going to go over mind control and different techniques and different devices that they have to achieve it. My last video, I went over extraterrestrial knowledge. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that. So first thing is that they have something called voice to skull technology. A voice to skull device is a non-lethal weapon which includes a neuroelectromagnetic device which uses microwave transmission of sound into the skull of persons or animals by way of pulse modulated microwave radiation. Also, it's a silent sound device which can transmit sound into the skull of person or animals. Note, the sound modulation may be voice or audio subliminal messages. One application of V2K is used as an electronic scarecrow to frighten birds in the vicinity of airports. This kind of goes hand in hand with the frequency of music, the frequency of the radio, the frequency of TV, and how they throw subliminal messages out to basically influence one's mind. Also, you have something called trauma-based mind control, where one may induce trauma on another in a way of either psychological torture, physical torture, etc. And after the trauma has been induced, basically the victim can be brainwashed into doing a horrific act, etc. Next, you have the MK Ultra Project, which many know about. They would basically test people with drugs like LSD, etc., to basically brainwash them and also program them to do specific things. MK Naomi is also another code name for mind control. The movie The Manchurian Candidate basically gives you a lot of information and breakdown on mind control. The movie was about soldiers that were kidnapped and brainwashed for sinister purposes. One scene in the movie, this guy, he received the phone call and basically he was programmed by what the person on the phone was saying. I don't want to say too much, but when you see a lot of them shootings in the news, just think, think critically. Mind control is done every day, every second, literally through our TVs, through our phones, through the radio, through the music, etc. And it's all been done through frequency. Frequency is powerful. Fear also correlates with mind control, which is why the mainstream always push fear. Hope y'all enjoyed this breakdown. It's true though, the mainstream pushes a lot of fear and a lot of things. And you know, the whole mind control stuff, um, it has a lot to do with subliminal type of messaging and you know that's supposed to not be okay to do but i'm guessing they just have all these illegal gray loopholes they can use so kidnapped from my friend's front yard by a man that was a total stranger and i found out later a serial killer i had spent the night with a friend my friend and i called another friend who lived at the lake and she invited us over and I mean, a day in the sun by the water. Are you kidding? Of course we're there. We called my friend's mom and she asked if there was anything that we needed to do before we left the house. And her mom asked if we could just water the plants. 
my friend wanted to take a shower, I volunteered to do that. And that was the beginning of a different phase of my life and a decision that probably saved my friend's life and definitely changed my life. I was outside watering the plants. I had no shoes on and I was 15. I was getting ready to get my license. I had driven my mom's boyfriend's car and it was a Pontiac Trans Am and I, and I loved the car. So when one drove by on the way out of the neighborhood, I noticed it. It's not a thing that I maybe would have noticed normally, but I noticed this car. So when it came back into the neighborhood, I immediately noticed it again. It pulled directly into the driveway and gets out of the car, comes directly over to me. He has a binder in his hands. He is wearing like a button down shirt. He's wearing jeans. He looks relatively clean cut. And he says that he was driving around. He saw me outside. He had some magazines or some pamphlets that he was giving out. And he asked if my parents were home. Now I knew not to tell people that I was home alone, but you're in the moment and he just responded authentically. So I said, this is my friend's house. And he asked if her mom was home and I said, no. He said, oh, well, I'll just leave these for you. This whole interchange, he's a good distance away from me. And so no red flags until he reached in to give me the pamphlets. And that's when I felt a press to the side of my neck. My reaction was to freeze. So when I felt the cold metal on my neck and he said, come with me, I said, stop. And he said, why don't you come with me? I kind of this is in a little bit. And, uh, and I did, I walked around to the driver's side. He opened the door. I put the seat forward and said, get in. I looked in the back seat and there was a plastic container. And he said, get in the container. My survival mechanism was to remain calm and attempt to appease him so that he at some point will let his guard down and I'll be able to escape. We drive for about 10 minutes before he pulls over to the side of the road, takes the lid off of the container. And at that point, he puts the ball gag in my mouth and restrains me and tells me to scream as loud as I can, which I do. And he says, oh, good. And then he drives for a couple more minutes before he stops, picks up the container with me in it and carries it short way and drags it over a threshold into his apartment where i am for the next 18 hours no way man i don't do that crap it's wild that's terrifying and i'm really glad that you're okay because like that doesn't just happen to everyone is working on technology where a soldier can link his consciousness to a robot therefore keeping his physical body unharmed and remaining alive that's really creeping me out who robot man Sounds exactly like the movie Avatar. Mm -hmm. That's because it is. This is your avatar now. If you go to 2045.com, you'll see that they successfully done this already with a monkey. The monkey's physical body is dead, but it still thinks it's alive in a computer. Their goal is to create an autonomous life support system in which the human brain can be taken out of the body and kept alive by a robotic avatar. He's a cyborg, you idiot! That way a person whose body is failing can live a full life. Just like the Black Mirror episode, San Junipero, now what's even more interesting is that this technology has been out for over 36,000 years and humanity is just now rediscovering it. Though mentions this in the Emerald Tablets, how he used these chambers within the halls of Amenti to transfer his consciousness. He was able to transfer his consciousness into these avatar bodies which were held in these 80 ton regeneration chambers which you see perfectly depicted in the movie X-Men Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. The first mutant apocalypse is essentially though. And as it turns out, we're already biologically programmed for our little cyborg upgrade. The truth is far more stranger than fiction. Yeah, it's pretty wild. The kind of technologies that we're trying to advance in in the medical and health industries. A 16 year old girl is after her mother says she suffered serious head injuries during a fight inside a high school bathroom. Mike and Jer, her mother, describes her daughter as being funny, loving, and caring. And while there are many questions still surrounding her daughter's death, her mother believes that it was the result of bullying here at school. My life it doesn't, it's going to be, I don't know, just I want to, I want to die. 
Maria Juarez is devastated. Her 16-year-old daughter, Shaylee Mejia, has died. She believes as a result of this altercation inside the girls' bathroom at Manuel Arts High School in South L.A. on Tuesday, March 5th. <laughs> Maria says her daughter hit her head badly, but didn't tell her about it because her daughter didn't want to worry her mother, who's a single parent trying to raise two kids, Shaylee and her little three-year-old brother. He's sad. He missed his sister. Maria says the next few days, her daughter complained that her head was hurting. My daughter, she has like a headache. Uh, and she said, Mom, um, I don't want to tell you something. I don't want to like um, wanna say, uh, I worry about that. This. Her mom says on Saturday, March 9th, Shaylee got gussied up and headed to a birthday party. Shaylee apparently fainted and was rushed to a hospital by a friend. Why did her friend take her to the hospital? Because she, she fell down. She fell down and then she doesn't like to talk. Maria says the doctors told her her daughter had a lot of brain damage. The doctor, he said like he has um, a lot of damage for the head. Maria tells us her daughter never regained consciousness and was pronounced dead six days later on March 15th. It was only then that her mom says she learned of the fight at school and saw the video for the first time. Inside, she, my daughter, she hit uh, the head. Hit her head. Mm -hmm. Maria says her daughter had been getting bullied at school ever since she started there last fall. She tells us this is another incident inside the school's bathroom from December. Maria says she filed a police report with school police after that incident and showed them the video. With the school police? Mm -hmm. From the first fight? Yes. And what'd they say? Nothing. But she says they never did anything and now blames them for her daughter's death. Everybody know when, when my daughter like, uh, hit the head, everybody, the teachers too, everybody know. And no one did anything? Mm -mm. That's really messed up. That's really, really, really messed up. And it sounds like more than just what happened at school. It sounds like something also happened after she went to go to that party that night and that nobody's talking. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's wild too because that's what they're acting like, man. Got ya. I waited about 45 minutes for that one, guys. Blinds have just opened. People are saying do a full shot of the screen, of the window. There's not much more I can do, guys. So that's the blinds. So I'm going to be going with my mum soon, guys, anyway. So the blinds are open. I won't be, won't be, you can start learning to close them. That'll fucking help, lad. Whoa! Fuck that, guys. I'm out. What the fuck? That's the worst one yet. What the fuck? I'm gone. I'm going to quickly show you this. That there's no fishing line or anything, what people are seeing. Fishing line. It's that, guys. What the yeah, nah, that's crazy, man. Hey, I, I'd seen the chair part in a previous clip, but I never saw the blinds part and where he was talking crap and then the chair moved. That's pretty funny, but like, yeah, I'd be out too. Twigo is now facing charges accused of drugging several kids during a sleepover in August of last year. Court documents mm -hmm. are revealing some details that are difficult to hear. A disturbing story out of Lake Oswego. 57-year-old Michael Maiden turned himself in after being accused of drugging three 12-year-old girls during his daughter's sleepover. According to court documents, it happened last summer in Maiden's Lake Oswego home. 
He's accused of lacing mango smoothies with benzodiazepine, usually used to treat insomnia and panic attacks. The court documents say the girls told police they felt groggy, some even blacking out. It states that Maiden made repeated visits to the basement where the girls slept, watching them sleep, and at one point holding his finger under one girl's nose and waving his hand in front of her face to see if she was asleep. One of the girls managed to stay awake and texted her mom just before 2 a.m. saying, quote, Mom, please pick me up and say I had a family emergency. I don't feel safe. I might not respond, but please come get me. Please, please pick up. Please, please. Documents say she then contacted a family friend who then came and picked up the girl and took her home and woke up her parents. Around 3 a.m., two of the parents of the girls went to the home to get the girls, and documents say Maiden resisted, letting them in at first, telling the parents the girls were sleeping. Maiden finally let the parents in, and the girls were taken home. All three girls did test positive for benzodiazepine. Mm, that's messed up, dude. What the hell? I just love the audacity of people who are not from New York screaming and yelling how New York is a hellscape and that New Yorkers are afraid to go out and just live their everyday lives. Meanwhile, New Yorkers have never once thought twice about going out into the city. New Yorkers are not afraid of the city. New Yorkers are afraid of the woods. And by the looks of it, uh, Alabama is significantly more dangerous than New York could ever be. For like a lot of reasons. <laughs> okay, man. Look at this wild video. I just want to know why you're here. I'll let him handle it. I want to buy property. Oh, you do? That's why I'm here. I register. I want to buy property. So why are you wearing that hat? I'm confused. To buy to buy property right. in West Bank, you have to kind of have wear a hat? You can wear a hat, but obviously you know the context and the, and the climate. Of what's so going Keller on. Williams sells land in Morgan Elliott, which they say is Israel. Right. Google says it's in the West Bank. I want, I, Palestine is yeah. West Bank, so I want to no, buy property. No, that's not right. You understand. Palestine is Let not in West Bank. Let me ask you a question. Do you so what y'all just saw was a video of a pro-Palestine man trying to enter an event where Israelis are selling land in the West Bank. Besides the fact that it's quite literally an illegal settlement, they wouldn't even let him into the event because he had a Palestine hat on. The guy that was trying to refuse him entry also had the audacity to say that the West Bank isn't in Palestine. It's absolutely ridiculous what these real estate companies can get away with. Just so you know, this one was from Keller Williams. So if you see Keller Williams or you're planning on working with them in some way or shape or form, boycott them and hold them accountable for selling illegal settlement taken land. Interesting. I'm going to have to look more into that. I can't just go along with your claims here. I'm going to have to look a lot further into that and then try and update you guys in a future video. I don't know. That sounds wild. Campaigning like it's 2020. His events look like they're socially distanced. No rallies, no town halls. He's not running like a man losing every swing state. Today, we're finding out one of the reasons why. NBC News reporting that the White House has devised a plan to hide Joe from his own voters because left wing pro Palestinian protesters have scared Biden into doing only micro events. If there's too many people, it's a guarantee he'll get heckled. So Biden's been kept away from college campuses, crowds and large auditoriums, and they're sticking to libraries, black diners and coffee shops. Now, the last time Biden went in front of a crowd, he got heckled. 12 times in a row. Joe and I had a chance to sit down. Genocide Joe! How many kids have you killed in Memphis? This is going to go on for a while. They got this plan. That was a little over a month ago, and Biden's been sequestered ever since. The fact he was standing there smiling about it the whole time. So now Michigan is on fire. Why is everything and everywhere on fire right now in the United States? I mean, every single state happens to be on fire at the same time. All right, all right. So, man, I love your TikToks. That's why I run your content. But I'm going to say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. 
and I've been pointing this out for like two and a half years, three and a half years now. Like, it seems like all these tiny little places that seem meaningless at first are just being lit up. But then in the bigger picture over the span of these last few years, all of these tiny places start to add up and create a giant area of places where there are some very important things. A firework plant, they're doing evacuations, getting people away from there. And they're saying they don't know what the cause of this fire is. I'm gonna show you some better video of it in a minute. But this is happening every single day. Now I don't know about y'all, but I'm almost three decades old. And I remember a time when we did not have fires every day, mm -hmm. every month, or even every year like this. It is all new relative to now. This is more footage of the same fire. Like I said, they're evacuating people because they think a bigger uh, blast, bigger fire is coming. The problem is that we don't know is where these fires are coming from, like how these fires are even starting in the mm -hmm. first place. You know, if it was up to me, I would look into what's starting all these fires at the same time. You know, that, that seems to be the thing. At the same time, all these fires are going off. And people are just like standing around recording it. Like we have been so traumatized in our mind over the last four years that everything we see around us is just normal. And this right here appears to be Chile now from their fire that they just had. Like this is freaking crazy. Everywhere. Speaking of fires, I'm just saying they're having an invasion of tumbleweeds in Utah. This <laughs> seems like nothing, but wait, look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of tumbleweed. But yeah, the fire thing, dude, like that's been going on for a while. And yeah, people need to take notice and people do need to look into it because like something's going on, man. For entertainment purposes only. Yeah, let's let's ban TikTok and control social media instead of actually doing something that's useful for our people. Welcome, to, welcome to TikTok. Make that shit TikTok. Welcome to TikTok. If swipe, we gonna make swipe. Uh, William swipe. <laughs> oh, he's for real. He <laughs> he didn't drop bullions. <laughs> oh, that was great. So why is this building on fire? It's actually really funny, man. It's a stab that was deserved. Aloha, good afternoon, and welcome to all my followers. Here's your Solar Cycle 25 space weather update for March 22nd, 2024. Active region 3614 is added again with another plasma eruption, but not quite as impressive as the one on the 21st. Most of this plasma went, in, went to the north once again and will not impact our planet. Within the next 24 hours, this active region will be facing Earth. And then to the southern region, we have active region 3615, which has been producing some small C-class flares, but does have potential for M-class flaring. Both of these regions will be facing Earth directly in the next 24 hours. Currently, there are seven sunspots that are active facing Earth. Here's a beautiful composite from the Solar Dynamic Observatory where you can see all the active regions currently facing Earth. And we also have a small coronal hole facing us. Once again, here's that plasma filament eruption. I'll keep you posted. Have a wonderful day. Ahui ho.
vote in the Senate happened just after two o'clock this morning. It was delayed by a late night standoff over some proposed amendments. But finally, lawmakers reached a deal, meaning government agencies will not shut down. Senators haggled into the 11th hour, finally voting overnight to pass the $1.2 trillion spending package to avoid a government shutdown. It's been a very long and difficult day, but we have just reached an agreement to complete the job of funding the government. Earlier Friday, the House Speaker mustered the two-thirds needed to move forward in the lower chamber but not without the threat of revolt. Today I filed a motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. Trump ally Marjorie Taylor Greene calling it a warning. Members on both sides say they do not want another ouster. Going through a speaker's fight again is absurd. I don't like it at all. I think it's a, it's a very dumb move. Republicans tout boosting spending for immigration enforcement while making cuts to foreign aid and the IRS. Democrats point to more money for child care and early education programs, as well as cancer research. Around 70 percent of the spending bill goes to defense. That includes a 5.2 percent pay raise for service members, the biggest increase in more than two decades. And that's a really big deal because food costs are up, fuel costs are up, housing, utility, all of these costs have increased. Bessa Pinchotti of the National Military Family Association is pleased but exhausted by Congress cutting it so close to their deadline time and time again. You have to make preparations as if you may not get that paycheck. Absolutely. You don't know if you should pay your child care for next week or if you should go to the groceries. Now, following the overnight vote, the government is now funded for the next six months, pushing the next potential shutdown threat into the fall. As for the bill, it heads to the president. Since he's spending the weekend in Wilmington, Delaware, we expect it will be delivered to him for a signature today. Jeff. What are y'all doing with all our fucking money? What what are y'all doing with it? To threaten shutting down again and us have to fund you again. Oh, yeah, that's that Freedom Cruise ship. I think I got another video of this from a, like, it might be the same angle, but it's a little more. That's wild, though. It's the second time that one's caught on fire in a couple of years. Yeah, there it is. Holy crap. That is not good. Why is our tail on fire? That's not good, y'all. Nope. Oh, my God. <laughs> good morning. Live on location. I just woke up. <laughs> on Celebrity Beyond and the Carnival Freedom, the, the tail was on fire again yesterday. Uh, and I heard in the same spot, so the whale tail, and, but it was caused by lightning. And a lot of people are panicking again and people about to go on the ship are nervous and they didn't understand why the same thing's on fire. Uh, but some people on the ship released this video that you just saw. I think it's under control. Everything's fine because this is like 15, 14 hours ago during yesterday afternoon, evening. And they're in the weather that we've kind of been in with this rain and lightning and wind. I'm here in the morning, we're rocking right now, but isn't that crazy? Like we were on the ship when the tail was gone. They just put it on a few months back, maybe last, you know, last year, later last year. And now <laughs> it's probably gonna have to have work done on it again. And um, I think it is the other side of the tail. I could be wrong, but someone said it's the same side on Reddit, but I think it's the other side of the tail. But what do you think? Isn't that crazy? Is Carnival Freedom cursed? It's not a, I mean, it's an older ship. It's not the worst. It's not the best, but what do you think? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is wild. And it is the opposite side of the tail. I mean, if you go back and look at the last videos that were posted from the last time it happened, it was the other side. 
and you can tell by looking at all the different videos that were posted that it was the other side so now both sides have caught on fire in two years that is wild and like they're getting struck by lightning to light on fire like i don't know about y'all but i ain't fitting to get on a boat that keeps getting struck by lightning and lighting on fire for nothing <laughs> no 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 Mm? Yeah! Baby mama come out the cut with a Uzi. <laughs> it's not a Uzi, but you know, still, she come out the cut with a gun. That's wild, man. <laughs> you better keep her. So YouTuber Mike Hill arrested for attempted M after firing at an officer and hitting an innocent bystander in the home. But young dudes nowadays is crazy, bro. You just turned 18 and you already threw your life away. Like, bro, did you even give your life a chance yet? Imagine making it through 18 years of your life just when it's about to get fun and you crashing out. I don't even really know this dude like that. But I'm hearing Funny Mike didn't put him on ever since he was a kid or something. And I'm hearing he a popping YouTuber. It's so many people on the come up that's YouTubers that wish they was big as him. It's so many people wish Funny Mike could put them on that would cherish it into death. And this dude right here just threw it all away trying to be street. I don't know him, but I'm hearing people say he's not even like that for real, for real. They saying Funny Mike had him put up and all type of other stuff. I don't even feel bad for dudes like this. Like, bro, you a young black dude that had everything going for yourself. He probably had the potential to make millions of dollars. And there's some people stuck in that life that don't even want to be in that life. It seems like most of the dudes that get blessed to get put on, bro, be the crash outs. I don't know what it is, but they is not going to take it easy on him. He hit somebody innocent. Bro, this ain't looking too good, man. No, it's not. It's not looking good at all. Even if he tries to call self-defense on it because of the fact that it hit somebody that had nothing to do with the altercation. That's... Dude, that's such a bad situation to be in i'm sorry bro like but really what were you thinking in the first place huge news coming out of the un as a draft resolution calling for a ceasefire has passed the vote at the un with 14 countries voting in favor of the resolution and the united states not vetoing it but instead choosing to abstain minutes before the vote netanyahu's office had received word from the united states delegation that they are not going to be vetoing Two separate resolutions today, one calling for a ceasefire and the other one calling for the release of the hostages. But the United States also let them know that the two were not linked, meaning they are separate draft resolutions and that calling for a ceasefire is not linked to calling for the release of the Israeli hostages. So the draft resolution was presented by a coalition of countries after the United States draft resolution was vetoed by both China and Russia. Right before the vote, there was negotiation going on with the United States over the word permanent ceasefire. The United States instead said they won't veto it if they changed it to a lasting ceasefire from permanent and that is what they did to get the United States to not vote, uh, veto this. All of the UN delegations are making their statements and let me read you the one by Linda Thomas Greenfield. She said that Hamas should accept the deal on the table. She's talking about the negotiations that are going on in the ground. She also said a ceasefire could have come about months ago if Hamas had released the captives and we did not agree with everything in the resolution which is why we did not vote for it and instead chose to abstain it just keeps on going and going and going like don't it i mean i don't at this point it's almost like it's just like they're doing it all on purpose it's like it's uh it's, it's just being done on purpose they, they don't want to stop anyways i got one more for everybody president biden if you ban tiktok you'll never be able to see this again this land is yours They breached the gates on the north lawn. We have a visual. Should we take the shot? President Biden, please reconsider your decision. Thank you, Mr. President. Now what in the hell is this? Um, I don't know whether to be terrified. <laughs> or whether to laugh uh i'm not sure what i just saw everybody 
Anyways. <laughs> That's what we got for another video. <laughs> My brain is melting. That's another video we can throw in the archives. Thank all of you for coming through every time I post a new video. Thank you for all the interactions with the channel. Thanks for all the support that you guys continue to give me every time. You know, I hope all of you are doing well. I'll try to get some more videos up this week, more than usual. And, uh, you know, hope all of you have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, whatever it might be for you. And until next time, peace.